like a leaf. He's behind the brush. Just calm him. down. Stay there. How far? 347. He's walking up. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah! <laughs> Well, hi there. Sir Keith Warren. Good Welcome. to see you. Hi. Harry. I'm Maddie. Nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah. Welcome to Well, thank you. Thank you. I told you we'll show up and they'll have a margarita for us. And, uh, and I mean, the customer service here is unbelievable. So what do you think of the view? It's over the top. It's so pretty. Welcome to paradise. Let's have some fun. <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, this is the best place that I know of for the trophy mule deer hunter that wants to kill a desert trophy mule deer. Look at this deer. My gosh. Check this oh, guy wow. out. <laughs> Look at the brow tines on him. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, sir. And it's down in Old Mexico. This is the Sonoran Desert. This is a rugged, beautiful piece of land that is home to a ranch called Rancho El Chaparral. This is like my home away from home now. Okay. I think you're gonna like this place. Oh my god. <laughs> Are those real? Yes, they're real. Wow. This has the biggest mule deer in the world. No kidding, they're bigger than elk. They're, they're huge. And the lodge is world class. Come on. Everything is perfect. I mean, when you start looking at it, everything is perfect. Wow. I just like being here. Me too. With my little baby girl. I don't need to kill anything. <laughs> my trip has already been made. <laughs> One of the biggest things you have to address when you're traveling to Mexico is safety. And that's not a huge concern for us with El Chaparral. And they meet you right when you get off the airplane, they help you with your bags, you get in the pickup and you go right to the ranch. It's totally safe. I feel 100% confident and I've never felt unsafe or nervous around any of these people. And it's so cool to be here in Mexico, experiencing a totally different culture, totally different style of hunting, and just hanging out with my dad. Okay, while she's looking around, I want to tell you all something. Uh, there's some sheep up here on the wall. These are desert bighorn sheep. So I guess I really got turned on to sheep years ago when my dad wound up, uh, he hunted desert bighorn in Utah. He was lucky enough to draw a tag. And it took him 28 days in the Utah desert to be able to kill a ram. And when he got that ram, it's like, I'm hooked. I got to do that. So I've been applying just about every year ever since. So he's put in for tags for years and years and years. He's never been lucky enough to draw a tag. So El Chaparral Ranch, you don't have to draw a tag. It's something that you can come here and you can just hunt. Now, I did wind up getting a doll sheep years ago. And anybody who has ever had the sheep fever knows, I mean, it's a fever. Either you're a sheep hunter or you're not. I mean, sheep hunters are a different breed. Huh? And, and now I can say that I'm a sheep hunter. You better have good optics, a flat shooting rifle, a good range finder where you know where your gun is shooting and you better go with a good outfitter. And so when given the opportunity down here at Rancho El Chaparral to come and hunt for desert bighorn, that's what I'm doing. And so Maddie is going to be hunting for coyotes and there's a lot of coyotes. All right, so we're uh, just taking off and we're gonna be driving around the base of a lot of these mountains and then they've got some uh, roads that wind up getting us up there high, but the sheep are gonna be up high more than likely because sheep feel real comfortable when they're looking down. This country is intimidating when you look at it, knowing that uh, somewhere out here there's a bunch of sheep, you just gotta find them. You know, it's, uh, it's rough country. And, uh, but it's amazing when you come in here and you deal with, I mean, when you deal with conservationists, people that are more concerned about the wildlife than anybody on the planet. And when they start putting food out and water out for these animals, how they start flourishing in this rough country. You gotta respect them for that. All right, so I don't know how many thousands of acres we've covered, but haven't seen anything till right now. And there's a ram up there about 800 yards out, up on the skyline. What we're gonna do, we're gonna get on foot and see if we get close. We've got a big ram right there on top of that bridge. Crap! Yeah. How far 
what was he? He's a Duke. A 363. I shot under him. Wow. He was all by himself, too. Dad gummit. I was rock solid and something is not right. I can tell you right now, next stop, we're going to the range. That ticks me off. I spend my entire life waiting for a shot like that in a bullet. Y'all did your job. Thank you. I just didn't do my job. All right, so we came back to camp and we got an effective range target put down there and clearly gonna confirm zero. And uh, you know how it feels when you <laughs> when you blow a shot up. It happens, I mean, you haven't been hunting long enough if you've never missed is what you always told me. And... Yep. All right, so this thing is should be sighted in three inches high at 100 yards. So just watch this. All right, Maddie, you ready? I'm ready. Nice. Good. Three inches high, perfect. I waited uh, my entire life to make that shot. And there's no doubt the gun is on, and there's no doubt that I messed the shot up. So let's clean up and head back out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Two sheep up there. We've closed the distance to 300 yards, but the sun is terrible, absolutely terrible. And they have no idea we're here. Let's do this. Let's see if this back out and see if we get a different angle on them. Okay. Optics. Optics are such an important thing to have on a hunt like this. Good optics. And it's for that reason that I've got the optics that I'm using. I mean, Sightmark makes some phenomenal stuff. They stand behind it with a lifetime warranty, and you need some good glass to be doing that glassing. We changed angles down here, and when looking up, everything looks different, so there's no telling where they went. We got a little baby off to the right. Certainly there's got to be another sheep up there besides that one up there, right here. Right there. You see him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's walking. Horns are very short and pointy. He's probably three, maybe four at the most. He's young. Where's your daddy? Everywhere I go, I know that Lucas products are going to keep my firearms working in tip top shape. All right, so I know this may seem like common sense, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. All right, in arid country like this, a lot of dust, and your rifle's going to get dusty, therefore. And one thing you don't want to use is a heavy duty oil, okay, to clean it. And it's for that reason I use a light product. It's made by Lucas Oil Outdoors, and it's the CLP. And the reason why is because this is a very light oil. But here's the common sense part of it. Okay, your optics, you spend a lot of money on optics and the glass needs to be protected. It's for that reason, take some Timber Creek scope covers like this. I mean, some type of scope cover and protect your glass. When you're in country like this, your gun's gonna get real dusty. This is like waking up to a resort, a hunting resort. And somewhere out here in this 66,000 acres of massive desert, there's a big horn sheep with my name on it. So we're gonna eat breakfast and then we're taking off. I'm in, let's do it. Even though we're gonna spend a lot of time on the high rack, we still are gonna spray down with scent killer. It works for days after drying, just to make sure we're doing everything we can to knock down our human odor. Look, man, he's carrying our paperwork. Look, look at that. Look. What you got, your paperwork? You never know, and a snack. The most important things when you're hunting. Paperwork, okay. <laughs> you do your paperwork, I'm gonna get loaded up. We're gonna hit up a mountain. This ranch is 66,000 acres. 
a beautiful, rough habitat. And these animals can be anywhere. And so what we're doing, using the same Hyperfire 2 Reconyx camera that I wound up using on my whitetail hunts, I brought a couple out here to use on this hunt. And the reason why is because with so much country to cover, it is virtually impossible to know what's at every single place wildlife is flourishing here is because they have provided food and water that is adequate for the animals. And while this camera is working, we're gonna be looking for sheep. Is he laying down up there? I think they both are. You can barely see that one to the left. They just appear out of nowhere. Did you see that, honey? The one on the right, he's just propped up like king of the world. Yeah. Oh, look at that, like a magazine picture, huh? That's a cool looking shot right there. He's not a shooter, but it's pretty cool. See, I'd take that if he was a shooter. Well, clearly there's a ton of sheep here. There's a bunch of sheep. That's for dog monster. How far is it? About 300. Eddie, keep an eye on him. If he stops, I'm gonna bust him. Uh, stop. He's gotta stop before he gets to that skyline. Come on. Uh, stop. I'm not gonna send a bullet over that skyline. I will not do it. It's got to be perfect. There's no need to rush it. Yeah. I don't think they're going to come back. All right, it's the beginning of day two, and we've waited until the sun comes up where it'd be a little bit easier to spot if we can see one side of the mountain, but I'm telling you right now with that shade, it's gonna to be tough to see them. Yeah, we've been driving around a lot. And, uh, we finally found a ram. He's way, way out there. And they've got the spotting scope on him right now to see if he is a, a shooter or not. The sheep weren't nearly as visible today, at least not yet. We'll see if that guy's worth even going for, but he's a half a mile out or more. We're gonna go ahead and take a run at him. So we came all the way up here because we had seen a real nice shooter ram. He didn't want to go with us. No, <laughs> but we need to check that side. So we're gonna hike around and see if maybe he's on this other side of the ridge. Yeah. The thing is, I look at that sheep and I think, they look at you like with this arrogance, almost like, what are you doing on my mountain? Simple, I came here to kill your daddy. He's laying right at the base of the tree, at the there's, bottom. There's two of them up there, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, but we want the one by the tree. Grab the computer. He's moving to the left. I'm shaking like a leaf. He's behind the brush. Just calm him. down. Stay there. How far? 347. He's walking up. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah! Oh. We did it! We got him! <laughs> Holy smokes, did you see that? That dumped him on his butt now. Now we gotta hike up there. That's all right. Perfect. That's brother. all right. That's wonderful. And boy, do we have a story to tell. Yes, we do. I have been dreaming for this moment all my life. And now my desert bighorn is dead at the top of the world. We can promise the people that are watching this that it didn't look this steep when we were down there shooting up. But we shot that sheep about an hour ago. Yeah. And I mean, it is like steep, 
and a challenge to climb. This is amazing. Oh no, I got it, I got it. I, I got it, I shot him, I'm gonna get to him. By golly, look at this. What an animal. Holy smokes, look at him. All right, let me get up here and get planted so I don't slide off this mountain. Oh my oh, gosh. gosh. Oh. We finally get up there to him. And when I put my hands on that sheep, it was like a lifelong dream had just come true. I don't know, I don't know how high we've climbed, but we have sure climbed way up to get him. And uh, this has been truly the hunt of a lifetime. I have, I've wanted to do this my entire life. Sheep hunting is uh, something that most people, uh, they may dream about doing it, but doing it is another thing entirely. It takes, a, it's hard work, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of time, but. Uh, and drawing a tag. And drawing a tag is virtually impossible. I've been applying in all these different states for better than two decades and can't get a tag. And that's the reason why I came down here to Mexico. And you can get a tag with Abraham Garcia at Rancho El Chaparral. They've got a tremendous population of these sheep. They've got tremendous guides, tremendous accommodations, and they will make sure that you have the hunt of a lifetime. And they've done that for me with desert mule deer and now bighorn sheep. And I cannot uh, tell you better remarks for those people. They are fantastic. Thank you. Sir, Thank you again. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. And Missy. Beautiful, beautiful. I am so grateful that you came up here and shared this experience with me. Well, me too. Thank you for letting me come. This place is over the top, everything about it. But I brought Maddie down here so she could experience this hospitality and now I promised her she could go for coyotes. I know that's kind of like a, huh? Coyotes, but. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, so she's going for coyotes and right now we're gonna take care of this guy and get him off the mountain and tonight there's gonna be a celebration. To another great day at the best hunting place I've ever been for mule deer and sheep. Amen. Cheers. Cheers. So I did wind up getting a bucket list animal on this hunt, a desert bighorn sheep, and I waited all my life to do it. I got to do it with my little baby girl, who's now a woman. It's like, but she's still my baby girl and she loves hunting. And I think I'm gonna have a piece of cake. I think I earned that. I think so too. <laughs> my dad has always loved Mexico. Uh, he loves everything about it, the people, the food, the culture, and the hunting. And I don't think that there was a better place that he could have taken his first desert bighorn sheep than here in Mexico at the El Chaparral Ranch. It's that big around. I'm just shaking right now. <laughs> I'm just shaking. And it was awesome. I got to be here with him and see the beautiful land and see the culture of the people and cross that off his bucket list for hunting. So I rate this trip a 10 out of 10. Absolutely. But the trip ain't over. I'm on deck next and I'm going after some coyotes. So you're gonna have to stick around and see if I'm able to roll some dogs here. She's not hunting for coyotes and you're gonna have to stick around to see what kind of surprise I've got for her. And I promise you, you're gonna love it. Yeah, this is the sheep that we carried off the mountain last night. So this is good. A lot of people may be thinking you know, that you come to here for the trophy, but the truth of the matter is, is that uh, it's all about the experience and eating what you kill is part of the experience. So I'm excited to be able to do that and share it with y'all. Yeah. My name's Keith Warren and I want to thank you for watching The High Road.